Hey guys, in this video I want to cover a rather simple technique for painting the end of a melter gun. Um, the paints you're going to need is Lead Belcher, uh, Corn Red, uh, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, we've got Troll Slayer Orange, uh, and then at the end, uh, <laughs> the edge, but I'm not going to pronounce this, am I? No, that one. I'll put it up on screen. Uh, um, or, if you can, the Vallejo fluorescent um, uh, orange would be the replacement for this, ideally. All right. So I'm going to use one of my Cadians for this. Uh, and the first step is going to mix an equal part of lead belcher with um, corn red there. All right. So we're not going to need a huge amount because obviously we're only doing the, uh, the barrel. Just grab that. All right. So... Yeah, you want sort of, good job, that's almost empty. Um, you want sort of a good sort of 50-50 split, right? So you're going to get like a really metallic dark red like this. Right? And all we need to do here, let's put it into focus, um, is we want to cover the whole, whole end of the barrel with this shade. Right? Just like so. Now add a little bit of water if you need to. So despite it being, um, what we're in November now, I've got the sun out. It's quite warm through this glass, so the paint will probably dry fairly quickly. That's why I'm adding a little bit of water to the palette mix there. Right, so that's it. We don't really need to worry too much about the end, but that's the first step. Right. So I'm gonna quickly just pause the video for a second, just give this a chance to dry. Uh, and then I'll move on to the next one. There we go, that's all nice and dry now. Um, so the next step is to use the corn red straight out the pot. Um, and we're, we're going to almost cover um, the whole model again, or the whole model, the whole barrel rather. Um, but we want to leave a little bit of the previous coat. So um, it's about one or two mil on the left that I'm not going to paint. Right. but the rest of the at the end of the barrel I am. So as you might have guessed with the selection of colours that I've got out at the back there, we are going to try and make it so that the end of the barrel is is hotter than the back. Like So I think with this, the, the more of the lighter reds that you use, I guess the theory is, is it's, it's more recently fired. Uh, and the more of the darker shades uh, uh, you use, um, it fired, I don't know, a few, a few seconds, a few minutes ago. I don't really know the science behind melter guns, how long it takes for them to cool down. Right, but yeah, it's already starting to brighten up a little bit. All right, so with that done, we can now move on to Mephiston Red. Right, let's give it a bit of a shake. Uh, and I'm going to paint even less with this. So again, I want to try and leave that maybe two or one or two mil space. Now this paint actually does dry slightly darker than it's coming out right now. Uh, and again, if you need to let the previous layer dry completely, then, then do so. I just know my paint is drying fairly quick at the moment with the sun coming through this window, oh, just to the uh, left of me, All right? There we go. Actually, to fill a little bit of time while this, this stage is drying, it is always worth drilling out your barrels. Right? I, for this, it's kind of crucial, actually, considering what we're going to do towards the end uh, of this process. Um, and in actual fact, there was a colour I missed out uh, from the beginning of this video. We're also going to need a white. There we are. All right. So um, drilling out the barrels, I think, is just good practice anyway, because I think there's nothing worse, especially with some of the larger calibre weapons where you've got a big heavy bolter on a Lehman Russ, where it'll be firing fairly chunky shells and the, the barrel is just flat. So yeah, always drill out your, your barrels. Uh, and for this particular technique, it will be pretty useful. All right. So with that almost dry, we're then going to move on to Evil Sun Scarlet. Let's give it a bit of a shake. All right, so now by this point, the, the, the surface area we're actually painting is getting less and less. I'm just 
and wall of this gown because my evil sons is not a new paint anymore. All right, so just the edge. Now, if you really cared um, for for it, uh, and you were you were not just trying to get things tabletop ready, you could do a stage between each of these. So you do a corn red and Mephiston red mix stage before moving on to just Mephiston red. Say, All right. um, it will give you a, a better blend. But these colours, I have to say, they 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 work pretty well together as they are. So just neat out the pot. They do blend pretty nicely. All right. And again, a lot of these do dry, dry darker than they are right now. Right, so. Now, the last thing, I might as well blur and merge a lot of these videos into one, saves on the editing process, is we're going to use the Troll Slayer Orange. Now, by the looks of it, that needs a, a damn good shake. It did. So, <laughs> shows you how often I actually use this colour. Right. Now, I want a, a, a thinner brush this All right where are we go let's go with this one so what we want to do is once we've once we've now used you know got the thinner brush out I want to try and edge highlight the end of the barrel right like this always find edge highlighting with a camera in front of me is is not the easiest of tasks make sure it's in focus first so and you look, you think, how, how shaky is this guy's hand? How does he paint, like, at all? And that would be a good question. Right. So, I find sometimes using the edge of the brush a lot easier. Now I've done quite a thick highlight there, but uh, whatever. Whatever. Right, let's go around there and also try and highlight the very end of this too, because there's a couple of ridges I suppose one on the, the the barrel itself here and then one on the bit we had just been doing all right so it's a bit of a sloppy job now sorry but there we go so hopefully it's looking like it's getting hotter now with the thinner brush I'm also going to go back a couple of steps I want to paint say the bottom of this indent about there with the orange I'm also going to do the front of this indent and the one beneath it with the orange. Right, like so. Can you see that? Yeah, so the fronts of the indents in the middle have been painted orange, where the indent at the front has, has been sort of high, well, highlighted, underlighted. I'm just trying to pick out the underside of this ridge. Right, so do the same thing here. And here, just in the corners. Right, then we're going to need to go back a colour now and get the old, I was about to say blood red, Evil Sun Scarlet out. Uh, and then quickly do similar sort of highlighting on the other recesses. Right, so I'm going to finish off where the orange didn't go here. Just like so. It also has a, I think it has the effect of your eyes kind of blur the colours together even more with the red being taken back as far as this stage. Right. There we are. So almost at the end now. How dry does this look? Should be all right. Just leave them in the, what little sun there is at the back there for a sec. All right. Next thing we're going to need, still with the, the thinnest brush you have, is the the white, so white scar here. Um, I definitely need a new white because I can do this. <laughs> but there is enough in here that will at least work for this. All right, so I'm going to take a small amount of what you could once describe as paint out the bottom of this and just add some water in here. Uh, I want it pretty thin. Try and get a little bit more pigment. What have we got? Is that fine? No, I want a little bit more. Yeah, definitely need a new white. It's like, why is it always, it seems to be always these three. You know, white, um, the silver, I would call it, as Rune Fang, I was going to say chain mail, 
and uh, a bad and black. It's always those three that seem to go. Right. So now, if it's if I've got enough on the brush, I can paint the indents here with the white. Right. This is why it does help having quite a watery paint because it it fills in those voids really easily. Right. Like so, it doesn't matter so much if you get it outside of this. Right, and again, this is another reason. Sorry, I've lost focus there. Another reason why I say drill out your gun barrels, because for this, right, you can do that. Right. So that's technique. I'm now going to have to set this aside because this does actually need to dry. Um, God, the sun's really coming out now. Um, it should should take no time at all then to dry. Um, so yeah, give me a sec and I'll finish this off. There we go. So that's practically dry now, um, and we're almost there. I think. I mean, you might you might be happy with that. Uh, if you are, probably if you don't want to do the next step, I would probably just add another white step into this, right? Just to make sure there's no there's no recesses that are still a little bit black from the base coat. All right. So the next stage is to use one of these um, oranges. Now, if you don't have the, the Vallejo fluorescent one there, uh, you can use this edge paint. Let's give it a go. Luganath orange. That might be right. Uh, but these ones are pretty good. They're, you, know, you can get them from eBay. They're, they're not that expensive. Um, it is worth picking up for, for moments like this because I think it does add that little bit extra sort of depth. Um, now, these do need a damn good shake. Uh, I've done that off camera. And they separate really easily these fluorescent paints so uh, it's worth doing that uh, now we're not going to need a huge amount I'm just going to damp a little bit out here so you can see i've been painting quite a lot with this recently and i've got to add my fingers what a numpty all right let's go and get the thin brush again make sure i'm not going to get orange on what is effectively a lot of white here <laughs> uh, and i'm going to add a little bit of water to the mix all right so these paints are pretty thin as uh, just standard, which actually plays to our advantage here, because it means these recesses that we've just painted white um, should show off this sort of brighter color even, even better. Right, so just gonna add in Yeah, no, in actual, in actual fact, what I probably should have done is not not done this video in in one big go because I probably needed the extra layer of the white in these recesses because again these paints are quite thin so there's a little bit of black still showing through. But for the purposes of this video, I think you get the technique. I'll just make sure I'm more careful. Um, with the melter gun I do next. So there we have it. That is my sort of rather basic technique for painting at the end of a melter gun that has recently been sort of discharged. Uh, again, if you want it that it's sort of uh, cooling down, you would use more of the darker colours if you want it so it's just fired or is firing if you've got some sort of weapon effect to stick in the end of the barrel then use more of the lighter colors um, but hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have um, leave a like drop some comments it really does help the channel if you can subscribe as well and i will see you in the next one